Well, we think that we might have found a window. You ready to back out? Yep. She does not want to turn. I was just like, yeah, nah, <laughs> not listening. I probably shouldn't have been vlogging. We were in a bit of a precarious situation. It's go time, pretty much. So our choices are stay here and buy a pineapple farm or get going. We've entered the modern era. And uh, <laughs> we're lazy cruisers. Well, we're 80% sailors. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia, intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then, and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. And between us, the real adventure has only just begun. A few months ago, after finally sailing across the Atlantic to the Azores, we set ourselves another sailing plan. We've decided that we're going to just do another circuit. We'll just cross back. So we're going to go uh, from here. We're going to then go down to Madeira, Cape Verde, all of those lovely places. We had a few months to fill until we could cross back again. So we spent several weeks away from the boat, catching up with family and friends, exploring new lands, and gaining some experience on other types of boats. The time had now come, however, to continue with our own sailing journey. We are finally back on the boat. So our journey to Madeira, we have two options. One is like a lot, a lot of wind, and one is not a lot of wind. Well, we think that we might have found a window. Um, as Adam mentioned yesterday, there were two windows that we could possibly take to go sailing to Madeira. And the next one will be on Monday in about two days time. So we've probably been in this marina about two months or so. And needless to say, the growth on the bottom of our boat is just horrendous. So if we are gonna go for a four day passage, probably about four and a half day passage, we do want to maybe give the hull a quick scrub. So what we're thinking, is to clean the hull, we'll go somewhere else and we'll take the boat for a little spin, get her, you know, get us used to sailing on the boat again. It'll probably be about a 10 mile, 10 mile journey. We will have some wind, I think, on the way back. I'm not too sure about the morning session though. Are we ready? Almost, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I can't wait to get away from that noise. It's so loud, 24 hours a day, they're dredging. Ah. Hello, hey mate. How quick can you get down to the boat? We haven't left yet. 15? Yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah, no worries. Just just jump out of bed, get straight down here and I'll wait. So I'll be on the helm while Adam is getting lines from the dock. And then we'll both hop up. Um, our friend Dennis is here and he's going to come and join us for the day. Are uh, you ready to back out? Yep. Reverse. She does not want to turn. That wasn't the best we've ever done. <laughs> oh, I literally had it in full lock to the left. Her bum just went to the just went to the right. Oh. Yeah, that's prop wash for you. That's definitely not like the Benetton that we were on, which practically reversed in a straight line. I was just like, yeah, nah, <laughs> not listening. There's a bit of average weather coming in this afternoon and so I want to stay close to the marina. I really wanted to clean the hull but I think I'm just going to have to suck it up and get in the uh, get in the water in the marina. So we're just going to go out for a sail and try to get it get, get it moving as quickly as we can. Let the ablative paint clean itself and um, shake it out, check everything is okay. And that's the best we're going to get I think. Um, it's like another seven miles. So it's like an hour and a half motor and then we'd have about an hour before I'd have to start heading back to get to the marina by five o'clock when the sort of average weather is due to set in. And that may or may not happen, but I'd rather get home and hosed well before then. So such is life. It's 
It's pretty weird, my body has goosebumps. It hasn't had that for years. I'm actually a little bit chilly out here. I'm not used to this. It's not even cold weather. <laughs> I'm not used to this. So. Anyway, this is nice just to get back out on the water. I'm really enjoying today. I'm glad that we, um, I'm definitely glad that we came out. It was kind of a bit of an impromptu thing in the morning. I'm not too fussed that we're not managing to go to the island just down there because it's, you yeah, know, it's just nice to go for a sail anyway, anywhere. She's, uh, tell she's very happy to be back out to sea. She's sailing quite well. We've got uh, six point happy sixes. Happy easy sixes from about 16 knots just forward of the beam. And uh, yeah, with a very dirty hull too. So she's quite, she's quite pleased to be back out on the water. It's time to come in. The weather has started to deteriorate a little bit and I think that we've helped clean the hull. That is the entrance to the marina and we just need to, uh, Adam's just hauling in the head sails now to motor straight in really. It was a just nice little like couple of hours sail. All right, coming into harbour now. With my success of bringing us into the marina when we were on the Beneteau 50, going to attempt to do it in this boat. Granted, as we said last time. We managed to drive in a straight line and not drive into the wall at the end of the straight line. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it! Uh, but still, it's a big step for me, actually taking the wheel when we're docking. But Adam does it all the time, so I feel like it's my turn to do it sometimes. As we got closer, it turned out that the approach wasn't quite as easy as we'd thought. I probably shouldn't have been vlogging. In fact, I couldn't really vlog. Um, Adam told me off for it because, to be honest, we were in a bit of a precarious situation uh, and I thought I'd try and film us coming in. Um, the wind was blowing us from behind onto the dock. I was in neutral, but we were blown, being blown forwards onto the dock. Even now, I'm still in reverse idle, uh, just to keep us off the dock while we tied on more. And thankfully, people from the dock just over there, we handed some lines to them to help us, so. 10 minutes later, we finished securing the boat and put our wetsuits on for a murky cleaning session on the hull. Alright, well today is the day. We've woken up and we've checked the weather and it's go time pretty much. We have spent the morning, um, well, first of all checking the weather and making sure that it was okay to leave and honestly this is just genuinely like the best of a bad bunch of weather. Um, we're expecting to have to motor one of the days um, but hopefully maybe some wind will magically come through and we won't. I'm very happy that the forecast is turning out the way I hoped it would. I was a bit dubious this morning because the wind that I thought we were going to have just didn't show up and it was rainy and horrible but as I thought we would we're chasing a front that's passed through now and we're following it up and the breeze is filling in from the predicted direction behind and there's kind of leaving blue skies in its wake. We all know how much you love blue skies. I love a good blue sky. <laughs> it's just been a long time since we've been out on our boat. I mean we went out for a shakedown sail and everything was fine and then we came in and cleaned the hull and that's, you know, so she's smooth and clean and I've changed the zinc on the prop and give that a good scrape. So frankly, she's running as well as she possibly can. Like, and we can't, you know, we can't stop or fix anything here because there's no chandleries or any kind of... So our choices are stay here and buy a pineapple farm or get going, <laughs> so. I'm just trying on some new life vests. Hey, how's it look? Look good. Yeah. Streamlined. I felt quite terrible after we visited my aunt and she said that every time she sees us offshore, she gets sick feeling because she doesn't see us so like life vested and strapped in and everything like that. So <laughs> as I say this, I can't remember what they are, but we decided that our rule, like we needed a hard and fast rule on when yeah. to, to life jacket up. And we were like, let's follow the clipper race rules. Yeah. 
they have pretty sensible when you have to wear a life jacket. Yeah. Uh, so that basically it's easier to list the times when you can't wear it and it's like less than yeah. 22 knots and two people on deck and daylight. We got to try to stick to the rules. Yeah. And uh, yeah. if you catch us out, well, yeah, get stuck in this. We bought these ones because we didn't like the other ones. They didn't really have a harness point. They were, to be honest, they were probably more suitable for like, we bought them years ago. They were ago. day sailing jackets. Yeah, they were probably more suitable for day sailing. And so we finally picked up some ones that are like, yeah. going to be more comfortable for longer periods of time so that we can sit down uh, on them. We just yeah. wanted them to be comfortable and on us all the time where we don't even feel them anymore. Very so, few clips yeah. and awkward strapping. And, you exactly. Know, and they're not cheap, but it's, you know, you're going to live in it and they'll have Pretty a long much, shelf yeah. life. So we decided finally to yeah. spend the money. We've entered the modern era. We had a reef in from the other day, so I think that we're just going to stick with one reef. I think it was supposed to be like 15 knots, which is yeah. definitely a full canvas weather, but we already have the reef in. And uh, <laughs> we're lazy cruisers. Well, we're 80% sailors and also it really helps balance out the hydrovane. And, yeah. and I just want to get the boat set up for the night yeah. and on, a, on, a, on course and just get, get, get into the rhythm as soon as possible. Yeah. Start giving it a little bit of back. All right, back to neutral. All right, you're out. That's beautiful. All right, that was uh, a little better than yesterday's efforts. Um, I think the wind was up a little more yesterday than it was today though, so that's probably why, but didn't, didn't scratch anything. We're officially kind of underway. We're still in the port, but we are <laughs> officially off the docks. All right. We've got the uh, staysail up because we've got sort of a bit less wind than I thought we'd have, but that's okay. We've got 13 knots right on the beam, so we have a full canvas. Every every square foot of sail we can raise is up, and we're making 5.7 knots, which is perfectly happy. I'm perfectly happy to do 5.7 knots. The seas are, oh, I don't know, we reckon five foot. I was thinking There's initially a couple that of they looked like, about, looked like about six to nine foot or like two to three meters surf as well. But since we've come out further, it's calmed down a little more, maybe just two meters. A bit confused and a bit rolly. There's been a fair bit of weather pouring through here lately. So that's to be expected. It's going to die off uh, in the next little while. Hopefully the swell drops when the wind drops so that we're not bobbing around like a cork. Kiara is on her way forward to do some some things and some stuff. She's found a few little things that she wants to square away before nightfall. Um, yeah, otherwise everything is going well. So the last piece of the puzzle before we basically are done for the day is to uh, set up old Happy Hydrovane out the back and, uh, and that way we can take the load off the autopilot and thus the batteries, but we'll just just let her, let her stretch her legs for a little bit. I'm, I'm trying really hard to take it easy and not rush, rush, rush and race, race and make us both sort of exhausted. But we have a tendency to sort of rush, rush right up to the end to departure time. And then we rush, 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 get the boat set up and then we're both exhausted before we've even done two miles. So I'm trying really hard to sort of just set the boat up slowly. Yeah, just ease into it. Kiara's, yeah, all, Kiara's already down. <laughs> It's just really hot downstairs and it's, I've taken seasickness tablets but you know, downstairs when you're hot feel a bit crazy. I'll just rest before I do my stuff on deck. A good well, turn on the lumpy foredeck would do you well, babe. Yeah. Oops. When I was uh, varnishing things into Sarah. Um, I obviously forgot to put these back on, so that'll be the first thing I need to do. Next job, I need to go and put some lock wire on the uh, staysail shackle. 
okay, that's all. Time to head back to the cockpit now. Staysail down as the winds are coming from a little bit more behind the beam, um, which means that staysail is not really doing anything and is in fact just shadowing the jib, so it's, it's not really working very well. But even with the staysail down, we're doing about oh, weird, I just saw 6.5 and now it's gone down to like uh, 5.4. So, all variety of wind speeds there that we're doing, so boat speeds there that we're doing. It's good though, the first, uh, the first few hours are good. You can still see the island behind us, you can still make that out and um, the, the wind's kind of dropped off a little more. Actually no, it, it went up and then went back down again. So it went up to about 20, put a reef in and now it's dropping back down to about 15, put the reef still in. So we shall see. All good? Yep. All done. Did you explain what we did? I did. Good job. So now we can actually sail where we want to go. As much as I love to carry the staysail, it's just not helping us when we want to go downwind. Even if we do squeeze an extra knot or so out of the boat, we're going the wrong way, so... Such is life, we have to go that way. Still making like six and a half, seven. It's not too bad. Bye-bye, yeah. Sao Miguel. Bye-bye, Azores, actually, to be fair. And sad. Yeah, I mean, we spent... I mean, we spent a lot of time there, I and mean, I don't regret any of it. It's such a lovely place, and the like. People are great. The food's great. The food's cheap. The marinas are cheap. There's lots of things to do. Just a great place. Unfortunately, though, the the Azores is home to the Azores High, and as such, getting in and out can be challenging. So you got to go when you got to go.